morning students today i will be taking a lecture on myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome now myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome is an extra capsular cause for temporomandibular joint disorder now before i start with this um, uh, myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome i just want some uh, some points to be clear like the muscles like there are cardiac muscles smooth muscles and skeletal muscles the cardiac muscles they are surround they are present in the myocardium while smooth muscles they they are present in the viscera that is they are lined the uh, viscera while skeletal muscles they are responsible for the various movements and they are attached to the skeletal structure okay well, students can you tell me that how many times we uh, are you are suffered with the pain or muscle spasm Uh, because of strenuous exercise like for example calf muscle biceps muscle triceps muscle they become painful they are they become spasm i think we all have suffered and we all have taken care for those those spasm muscle now in the same context this is a myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome where masticatory muscles are involved now the this mpds topic i'll be discussing under definition under these uh, under following heads definition terminology etiology pathogenesis classification clinical features physical examination and diagnosis management and conclusion now again student this is very important topic as any question from either of these heads can be asked like definition only pathogenesis only clinical examination or management or a complete long question can be asked where you have to elaborate all those uh, all these terms or sometimes any of the entity from management can be asked we will begin with the definition the myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome is a pain disorder in which unilateral pain is referred from trigger points in myofascial structures to the muscles of head and neck pain is constant dull in nature in contrast to the sudden sharp shooting intermittent pain of neuralgia what does this mean that is there are trigger points which are present in the muscles of mastication which on palpation they elicit pain and pain gets referred to the uh, area which is distant to that particular muscle now the muscle speciality is there is the unilateral pain now what are these trigger point a myofascial trigger point is clinically defined as hyper irritable spots in skeletal muscle that is associated with hypersensitive palpable nodules in a torn band the spot is painful on compression and gives rise to characteristic referred pain tenderness that is the these points are tender painful now there are different terminologies which has been proposed by different um, clinicians like costin syndrome Uh, in 1934 as a symptom complex where the pain is in ear sinus and facial region schwartz in 1956 term as a temporomandibular joint pain dysfunction syndrome considering pain arises from the temporomandibular joint but laskin in 1969 clarifies that the pain is in a muscle and termed as a myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome which we are using right what are different etiology now here muscle is actually painful the muscle is in a hyperfunction why there is muscle hyperfunction because it is disturbed occlusion bruxism secondary to stress and anxiety and or occlusion disturbances the internal joint problems such as disc displacement disorders degenerative disc joint disease parafunctional habit prosthetic problems psychogenic cause or sleep disturbances most of these or all of these may lead to the muscle to be in hyperfunction and so the 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 different etiologies enumerated here will lead to the muscle in uh, hyperactive or muscle will become more active now this is very classic uh, picture most of the books they have shown this picture and this is a concise diagrammatic representation of etiology like for example this it starts with the stress this myofascial pain dysfunction usually starts with the stress the stress will lead to the muscular hypertrophy 
dental irritation will give to the muscular hyperactivity here the muscle is muscle of mas masticatory muscles then muscle because of the hyperactivity they become fatigued and may lead to the myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome now this mpds once developed may in turn cause the occlusal disharmony internal derangement degenerative arthritis or contractures in that particular muscle will lead to the altered chewing pattern this in turn will lead to the myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome that is this is completely the vicious cycle that one uh, factor may lead to the mpds this mpds will lead to the another factor now 1969 laskin proposed why this is occur now there is the nerve or the muscle is surrounded by the nerve now this nerve stimulates the muscle when there is a stimulatory factor like stress occlusal disharmony trauma there is muscle hyperactivity which leads to the calcium and atp depl depletion the prolonged and sustained muscular contraction will lead to the formation of clot bands within the muscle and the with contraction knots the contracted muscle are thought to reduce the circul local circulation now the muscle which is normal now it gets compressed now if this is compressed the vasculature which is present it again gets compressed and the oxygen supply to that particular area it gets diminished significantly now this local hypoxia associated with the release of endogenous inflammatory substances now this is what uh, the pain and inflammation starts this prostaglandins bradykinin serotonin histamine and interleukin are responsible for pain and pain is specifically in that compression nodes within tort bands and called as trigger points this particular diagram is showing this is a trigger point then these are the tort band of muscle the normal muscle this is a muscle where there are contraction of the muscles occurs and the tort uh, muscles may lead to the trigger point formation what Uh, what are the different clinical features now patient of a age group 20 to 40 they are more prone plus females are having more predilection as compared to the men about 50% of the population had chronic head and neck problem but only 6% they need the treatment because of severe symptoms now how you will diagnose this mpds there are certain characteristic feature of mpds like pain usually continuous dull deep quality pain will increase during muscle activity like muscle activity in this as they are masticatory muscle chewing habit the lateral excursion opening closing those just speaking laughing yawning all these are the muscles activity they may increase the pain pain persists even on night time pain radiate to the surrounding area like head neck ear or the muscle which is involved other features like headache tingling teeth uh teeth sensitivity ear pain tinnitus dizziness vertigo and associated fatigue nausea vomiting excessive sweating and flushing now we should understand where exactly the muscle is originated where exactly it is inserted and so we are going to diagnose the case which muscle is involved either of the muscle gets involved one two or combination of muscles may involved but on one side only masseter if it is involved the pain will radiate to the masticatory mandible maxillary mandibular tooth tmj region facial region sinusitis deep ear frontal region and the temporal region temporalis muscle involvement will lead to that maxillary tooth and temporal nerve medial pterygoid it will be to the mouth tongue pharynx heart palate and behind tmj lateral pterygoid zygomatic areas maxillary sinus and tmj region The, those were the like, those were the clinical uh, pain how the uh, how and where the pain is but to call it as an mpds raskin has given some diagnostic criteria now what are those criteria first is unilateral muscle pain muscle tenderness uh, clicking in a temporomandibular joint limitation of a jaw movement this limitation of jaw movement is because the muscle is painful now there are two two typical negative characteristic um, in this but in this uh, disorder is an absence of a radiographic evidence of an organic changes in joint itself and lack of tenderness in tmj what does this negative point mean it is tmj is not involved all but it is the muscle which is involved now if a patient come to you how you will diagnose the case now what things you should perform 
uh, what things you should ask for. That is clinical history is important. Now pain with which the patient will come and the second complaint will be the, the mm, limited movement. Now first about pain you are going to ask site of pain, mode of onset, duration of pain, frequency and quality of pain, time at which the, it, the pain starts, time at which it is more pronounced and the trigger points. All those things about the pain you are going to ask. Then other things like occupation, sleeping habits and paracultural habits. History of previous trauma, prolonged dental treatment, emotional stress and associated symptoms should be asked to rule out any etiologic factors. Now you have to do the physical examination. It is under articular, muscular, dental and cervical. Articular that is TMJ examination should be done thoroughly so as to rule out that TMJ is not involved. Muscular examination, muscle should be palpated for trigger point like masseter, temporalis, lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid. Resistance test should be performed against the action of that particular muscle so that the pain will be, pain will be produced and muscle will be diagnosed. Dental uh, or the occlusal discrepancies like that can be of anything like gross occlusal discrepancy, anterior open by, cross by, reduced vertical dimension, atresion, wear facets, malocclusion, maybe skeletal, dentofacial deformities, any of the dental or occlusal discrepancy should be found out and should be noted. Cervical examination, neck group of muscles should be palpated as these muscles are the accessory muscles of mastication. Now, uh, the certain other examinations like hyoid bone palpation should be performed. Now, you have to do physical examination also supported with the radiographic examination so that you should rule out the TMJ involvement. Any intraarticular pathologies, the osseous soft tissue pathology should be ruled out so that your diagnosis will be confirmed as an MPDS. Now, there are certain lesions which can mimic the MPDS. The first and foremost is odontogenic pain. Odontogenic pain may be because of pulpitis, periodontitis, or pericornitis. For pulpitis, you should think for a decayed tooth or with pain without, uh, that is, there will be pain, tenderness on percussion. Then there will be pocket, if it is suffered with the periodontitis, there will be pericoronal flap inflammation if it is the pericoronitis. Now, the second uh, differential diagnosis is myositis. Now, myositis, as the name suggests, it is a muscle which gets inflamed, which shows the signs of inflammation. The muscle will be any muscle from the body, and in case of MPDS, it is the muscles of mastication. The third differential diagnosis is pain specific to TMJ. Now, here, the, if it is because of TMJ, there might be internal disc derangement with reduction, where there will be clicking, um, internal disc derangement without reduction, there will be presence of lockjaw, then there, there might be septic arthritis, discitis, anuvitis that may lead to the pain in the TMJ, where you can see that TMJ is actually involved, pain elicits in the TMJ and can be seen in either of the radiographic examination. Then trigeminal neuralgia, pain will be limited to the branch, dermatome to that particular nerve, usually the trigem, uh, trigeminal branches. Then there will be trigger zone and the pain will be electric shock like, remains for a shorter duration and it will go off. While here there is must, the trigger points will present only in the masticatory muscle. The fifth one is the atypical facial pain. Now, atypical facial pain, again, it will be continuous, persist, and even in the night. But the difference is there are no trigger points in the atypical facial pain. Otitis media, the next one, where pain elicits from the ear. That is, ear, the ear will be the first. In, in case of MPDS, the referred pain is in the ear. You can see the difference. Then there are no tender points in the muscles of mastication. Uh, masticatory muscles when the pain is because of otitis media. Then parotitis here as this region is suggesting the gland will be involved, parotid gland will be involved. The common reason of parotid gland is the bacterial infection and so you can see the first discharge from the ductal orifice. Then uh, sinusitis here the sinus will be tender it, on palpation. This patient will give you the history of cold or pain which will be increased during um, lying down position and the muscles of mastication will again be normal. Once you diagnose, you are going to manage the patient of MPPS. 
MPDS treatment is divided broadly as education of patient for self-care, pharmacotherapy, alternative heat and cold therapy, physiotherapy like TENS or biofeedback, and intraoral appliances or stabilization splints. Now, the first is the education to the patient. Now, this is a behavioral modification. Levin proposed the five methods for behavioral modification. Why it is important? Here, patient etiology, we considered the stress as one of the factors. And most of the treatment modality required patient's cooperation. So patient's modification, behavioral modification is important. Here first is re-education. We have to re educate the patient about the pathology, why the pathology is, what are the symptoms of pathology, and how it is going to, how we are going, how it's going to aggravate. That is, for example, if patient is having stress, the stress factor will increase the um, the disorder and so education is important reassurance is important that is there will be no residual uh, deformity once the treatment will be done suggestion and self-care and interpretation these three things whenever you are discussing the patient it should be your should, attitude should be calm patient has to dis we are going to uh, discuss the patient that these all habits are giving the patient trouble and so the habit should be eliminated Elimination is important with the patient's cooperation. Certain instructions should be given to patient like the, we are going to ask patient to notice the changes in the in their behavior. Okay, up till now he was doing it but it was unknowingly unconscious. Now we have to ask the patient to give unconscious effort. It, yes, these are the habits and so he is developing the uh, MPDS. Now he he, has, he is going to relieve those, uh, that is, he is going to avoid those habits. Notice any clenching, grinding, tapping of a teeth or rigid holding of a jaw movement. Ask patient to check for teeth clenching, overwork, fatigue and stress, avoid biting unilaterally, avoid consumption of hard foods, food that require wide mouth opening, avoid habitual clicking of a joint. This is very important. Most of the patients, they have a habit. What do they do? They pain hota hai. They try to elicit that pain. Ask patient to avoid those things. Avoid habitually maneuvering of a jaw into position to assess its comfort or arrange. Avoid sleeping in a posture that plays the jaw in stress. Avoid elective dental treatment while symptoms of pain and limited opening are present. During yawning, now this is again very important. During yawning, the, the mouth opens wide. And patient has asked the patient to support underneath the chin with thumb, index finger or with the back of hand. Now there is stress. We are relieving, we are taking care of a uh, stress factor. But there is muscle which is in pain. There is a uh, muscle which is in a spasm. So we have to give some treatment, some medications to relieve pain, to relieve the spasm and again to calm the patient. And said, here I have mentioned only two, that is aglopinac, acyclopinac, but we have a list of it, reduces, which relieves the pain and inflammation. Then there are muscle spasm, which can be relieved by centrally acting muscle relaxants. The uh, few drugs like metaxolone, lorzoxazone, reclofenac, tizanidine. Now these drugs will relieve pain, but take care that the medication is having effects like drugs only. So should be given uh, at night time. The, there are certain drugs like tricyclic antidepressants, anti-anxiety drugs, sedatives, hypnotics. Like these, um, these drugs should be given to improve the quality of sleep. Now, this should be done under medical supervision. Then there is another treatment like alternative hot and cold therapy. Moist heat opens the capillaries to promote the increased blood circulation and ice is quite effective for reducing the muscle swelling and pain, especially in acute situation. Now heat as well as cold therapy can be helpful in relieving the muscle spasm. Plus, the alternative use of heat and cold therapy is effective as heat will cause vasodilatation and cold will lead to the vasoconstriction. And this alternative heat and cold therapy will be helpful for uh, quick relief. Now there are refrigerated sprays. Now, most of the time volume spray we have applied uh, whenever we are having a pain, pain or a spasm. Now vapocolant sprays such as ethyl chloride or a fluoromethane is used to reduce the muscle spasm by causing the counter irritation. Since the pain and temperature sensation travel by same 
spinal pathways, it is theorized that the response to pain muscle is originated from the trigger points can be taken by care by the these sprays. The one of the most effective method in MPDS is trans transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. That is TENS. Now this is simple non-invasive analgesic uh, technique, and it is performed mostly in the physiotherapy department. We have a well-established physiotherapy college where this technique is very routinely done. Given now during TENS, pulsed current are generated by a portable pulse generator and delivered across the intact surface of skin via conducting pads called electrodes. The, it activates the large diameter nociceptive fibers, that is A delta and C fibers. Now, it is, um, it is uh, not MPDS. It is also given for postherpetic neuralgia, trigeminal neuralgia, as well as other facial pain. There are certain contraindications, advantages. Now, we will first shift to the uh, parts of equipment, but the, this is a patient and the electrodes are placed on the muscle which is involved. Now, what are the different steps? Connect the electrode to the pins on a lead wire and position electrodes to the patient's skin. Switch the tense device on. Gradually increase the intensity until patient experiences the first tingling sensation. Gradually increase the intensity further until the patient experiences strong but comfortable tingling sensation. Intensity should not be painful or cause muscle contraction. Apply it for 10 to 15 minutes and gradually decrease the intensity and then switch on the tense unit. This has to be performed twice or thrice per week, depending upon the situation in the particular patient. The another method is stabilization applied. Now, whenever you are seeing that there is a teeth, dental occlusion, dental malocclusion, the, the dental discrepancies are there, you are going to give these particular appliances. Now, bruxism is one of the most uh, common etiologic factor. Now, the stabilization appliances, what will they do? They will distribute the parafunctional forces equally to the everywhere so that forces which are placed on the masticatory muscle will be reduced. These appliances protect the occlusal surface of teeth from the chronic nocturnal bruxism. Usually, patient is instructed to wear the sprints only at night. Now, sprints should cover all the maxillary and mandibular surfaces and have bilateral posterior contact with little or no anterior contact. Stabilization appliances should feel comfortable to the patient when fitted for first time and re-evaluated after one. It is not that we are giving patient the appliance and ask patient to go back. No, the patient should be called back. It should be re-evaluated and it should be monitored every one month, one, one week. And uh, uh, you have to monitor throughout the bruxism. And uh, as the bruxism, should, it should be relieved of. Then there are prosthodontic treatment, orthodontic treatment, uh, depending upon the, the etiology. Whether if, if it is uh, the patient will have crossbite, traumatic bite, you are going to treat it by orthodontic treatment. If the patient requires fixed appliances, you are going to do the prosthodontic appliances. Now, the second E, the next is anesthesia. Now, anesthesia, it will relieve the pain. Now, you are going to administer the anesthetic agent without vasoconstriction in the trigger points. Once pulp, after palpation, you are going to administer the local anesthetic agent to that particular area and do the light relaxing movements. The next is biofeedback. Now, biofeedback is a rapid method of achieving muscle relaxation. Biofeedback is the use of special equipment. Here, special equipment is electromyographic machine where patient will see which muscle is having the spasm. Once he knows that the muscle is in a spasm, certain movements, certain exercises will be asked to perform by the, uh, by the patient to relax those particular muscles. And again, the EMG machine will show that whether muscle is in a spasm or it is relieved. That is, with the help of the machine, the patient will be the, relieving the, mus the muscle spasm. And so it is an biofeedback machine massage i think we all have performed this massage technique which improves the local circulation and reduce the uh, pain by reducing the local biogenic amines the, this next therapy is diathermy and ultrasound very important because it is improves the muscle spasm of a deeper muscles it produces heat and thus improves the local circulation now up, up till now we have performed the um, 
therapies which are giving either pharmacotherapy or, or in the form of some um, appliances here hypnotherapy when patient is in a stress cannot be relieved by any other technique where you are sending patient to the hypnotist and patient's cooperation is important because patient has and again patient's belief is important and in the hypnotist this method will helpful for relaxing the muscle acupuncture the next technique where there is simple where it is uh, the method is simple effective and conservative pain control modality the what actually the um, clinician do there are certain meridian points and with the help of small sharp needles he rotates in the finger and these acupuncture points they are being pierced and the pain is relieved here the pain is relieved but not the cause so to summarize mpds is a psychophysiologically altered condition involving the muscles of mastication and cervical group the condition is characterized by dull aching radiating pain often results in the muscle spasm and restricted movement an accurate diagnosis is accomplished by careful history taking and thorough examination thus therapy should be directed towards reducing stress rehabilitating the occlusion and relaxing the muscle so as to alleviate the condition all the factors should be taken care then only you are going to achieve the muscle normal muscle so to conclude a better understanding and working knowledge of my facial trigger points and my facial syndrome offers an effective approach to relieve pain and restore function in patients thank you patient thank you students i think hope uh, i hope the topic is simplified to you and you understand the topic still you have some queries you can ask me to my email thank you